Worlds here at Epcot. That's right. We're going to try the best or most outrageous drinks in all 11 counties here in Florida. <laughs> oh, Orange County. <laughs> okay, sorry. That's right. We're going to try the best or most outrageous drinks in all 11 countries around the world. Wait, that's 11 drinks. Finally, my plan is working. It's, it's the, the Epcot, Epcot Drink Around, around the World, world Challenge. Challenge. Our first decision. Well, is it really a decision? I don't think so. I think we all already agree. Left. Why? Because beer before liquor never been sicker. In the UK, you're probably going on a new beer. Do you really want to drink 10 drinks and then drink a margarita? I agree. Oh, I don't know what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> Kicking off your your trip with uh, with some actual liquor as opposed to beer uh, is always smarter for your body and uh, just more of a fun I guess drink beverage journey if you will. Yeah. Yeah. To Mexico. Now with that world showcase, a challenge has sort of entered the Disney zeitgeist called Drink Around the World. This is where folks will start in either Mexico or Canada and make their way around the entire world showcase, grabbing one drink in each of the 11 pavilions. This challenge is obviously tricky, but we think we perfected it to have the most fun while also staying safe, not getting sick and things like that. So we're going to be doing that today, showing you some of the best drinks to grab, telling you what they taste like, and telling you how to stay safe and healthy while you're doing so. Now, while Sage and I drink around the world, Emma's going to be doing things a little differently. Yeah, so if you are headed to drink around the world at Epcot and you're not a drinker, if your friends are doing so, or if you want to experience this without drinking a bunch of alcohol, there are non-alcoholic beverages in the pavilions as well that we're going to showcase some of the most interesting for you today. Um, because Emma is... Making sure we're safe and DDing. Heading left starts you out in the Mexico Pavilion. And you can see this one's pretty popular. It's usually pretty busy over here because it's the start of World Showcase. And also, Mexico Pavilion's a pretty cool pavilion. It's one of my top two. Two of the best places to grab drinks in Mexico are one at La Cava del Tequila, which is located in the Mexico Pyramid. It's one of my favorite bars in all of Disney World. I think you guys agree. Yes, yes. it is also mine. It's amazing. Uh, but if you don't want to go wait in the sometime very long line uh, for La Cava del Tequila and you just want to go ahead and get moving, there's also shows that in Margarita, which has very good frozen margaritas as well as some on the rocks. Uh, but that can be a great option to grab and go. We made it to one of my favorite bars as well because Quincy can't have everything for herself. Yes, I can. <laughs> uh, we're here at La Cava del Tequila which is the uh, tequila bar in the Mexico Pavilion. And it's not just tequila. Tequila is their specialty, but you, it, it is a full bar. But they do specialize in specialty margaritas. As you can see, there's a huge line uh, to get to go drinks. But if you, if you would like to, uh, you can sit inside, maybe have some chips and queso, grab your margarita. But word of warning, if you are seated in there, it tends to be, you know, a little leisurely. A lengthier experience than you would, uh, you know, just obviously just grabbing and going, but uh, services a little leisurely just because of uh, all the demands they have to do for the to-go drinks. We're going to do the Dragona's Top uh, Shelf, which is Casa Dragona's Blanco Tequila, Orange Liqueur, Agave, Fresh Lime Juice, and Black Ant Salt Rim for $24, which is interesting. I've never had the Black Ant Salt Rim before, have you? I haven't either. Oh, this will this will be an experience. All right, so from La Cava del Tequila, we went the, went with the Dragonis Top Shelf, uh, which is right here. Uh, they were very kind and split it into two glasses for us, including giving both of us the black ant salt rim, which you can see little pieces of ants on there. I don't. I didn't realize it meant actual ants. It meant real ants. That's this is my first time with this assault. There are before. segments. Um, and Emma, I got the Menti Rosa. It's Italian orange agave, cucumber, lime juice, agave, nectar, and hibiscus salt rim. I'm actually really excited to try this too. It looks yeah, good. it is non-alcoholic. Non yeah, full mocktail. So just because you are not uh, drinking alcohol around the world with your friends doesn't mean that you can't have some fun of your own and, and drink some very very cool drinks. And it's gorgeous. It's prettier than ours. Really yeah. Drink number one. Drink number one. Cheers. 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 I'm going for the rim. It tastes like ants. Like actual ants? No, it tastes like salt. Mm. Oh. It tastes like it tastes like seasoned salt. It's pretty it's, good actually. Yeah, I just say this is actually really good. I'm I'm actually impressed. I need to remember what it is. Yeah, I'm a I'm a fan of this. I mean 
It says high quality tequila in it. It is literally called the Dragones Top Shelf. Top Shelf, baby. Um, Sage picked these drinks out, can you tell? <laughs> it's definitely on the fruity side. I'm tasting a lot of the lime and not a lot of the orange, which I was nervous about because I'm not a big orange fan. Me, me too. The orange adds a nice, like, like aromatic aspect, but otherwise it's not overwhelming, which is awesome. I'm going to try the answer. So, I'll give my quick review while he's tasting. This is actually really delicious. It's really light. It's really refreshing. It has the cucumber lime juice in it as well as some blood orange. And I think it's balanced really well. I actually would probably prefer this over some of the margaritas. It's really nice. It's literally just a salt rim. It tastes like a salt rim. I keep trying to think maybe there's like a different taste aspect to the ant situation, but it, I'm not getting a weird ant taste. It tastes like chip seasoning to me. Like it's a seasoned salt. Because the, the salt, it's, because it's, it's uh, bigger, like the, yeah. the pieces yeah. are bigger, so like there's a little bit of a crunch to it. Yeah. All right, everybody give their drink a one out of five uh, woohoos. One out of five, one out of five woohoos. One out of five woohoos. One out of five woohoos. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say four woohoos. I'm going four woohoos. I'm going to say three woohoos because uh, it, it, it it is a good margarita, but it is just a margarita. It's a normal margarita. Yeah. It's a high quality margarita, but it's just a normal margarita, and I feel like we're going to have better drinks throughout the day. <laughs> All right, we are headed into Norway. Norway, the land of the ice. Troll, oil rings, frozen sisters. <laughs> so here we are. We are in Norway. We are going to go to Kringla Bakery for our stop. Uh, there's actually a few options that you can grab drinks here in Norway, but we are going to head to the bakery. So they told me... What are they doing? What's going on? They're on an Elsa. They're the topiaries. I don't even have... I have no words. So for our second drink, we went a little sweet. I feel a little sweet coffee here. So Quincy and I are going to split the Viking coffee, which is uh, obviously coffee, uh, Bailey's Irish cream liqueur, and Camorra coffee liqueur. Emma's non-alcoholic beverage is going to be the Kristoff Calf, which is frozen coffee with coffee chocolate sauce and garnished with coffee chocolate crunch. I am so excited. Hello. It is basically, I think, the frozen Viking coffee without alcohol, and this is what I need in my life. Yeah. So I'm very excited. Let's go. Ready? I'm a professional. Are you? Do tell. So, hey. Cheers, friends. Cheers. To Norway. To Norway. That is so good. It's so good. Oh man, it's creamy. It's a lot. It's very, uh, very de uh, dairy. I'll say that. Very dairy. Very dairy. Incredibly dairy. Lots of cream, uh, but you can, t you can definitely taste the, the liqueur and the Bailey's, which um, that means there's a, there's a solid amount there, which I'm excited about. Uh, but I love the chocolate in there. It's really good. I would definitely get this again. This makes me feel like you have coffee ice cream or an alcoholic drink. And that is amazing. I will warn you, I've had this on an August day. Too much, too much dairy. Not the kind of thing you want in the middle of a theme park day. But today, it's kind of, it's March. It's kind of a, it's hot, but it's not too hot. This is a really killer drink. A thousand percent. How's your Kristoff coffee? This is everything I had dreamed of. It's honestly exactly what they described, just without the alcohol, like no Baileys in it. It's very thick, it's very creamy and chocolatey. And it's, I don't know, it's simple and delicious, but you can tell, you still can taste the coffee. So if you don't like the coffee flavor, don't rely on this. The crunchies remind me of Cocoa Crisp. Yeah, Cocoa, Cocoa Crisp. Yeah. yeah, they're really good. Okay. Yeah. Our next stop is here in the China Pavilion uh, at Joy of Tea. Joy of Tea is a little kiosk that stands kind of right on the walkway. It's really easy to stop by and grab a drink. Although I highly recommend venturing into the China Pavilion as well. The theming in this pavilion is absolutely beautiful. There's a lot to see, some really cool shopping to do. But we are stopping here at Joy of Tea to grab the next sip on our tour. And I'm gonna grab a little snack too, don't tell anybody. All right, we have found a beautiful and idyllic bench here in the gardens of the China Pavilion. Here we are. Here we are. Excited. We got uh, our first snack of the day. One of our tips is to eat when you're drinking around the world. Otherwise, your body will probably hate you. You gotta absorb that alcohol. Yeah. We also all ate together before we even started filming. We did to make make sure to have a solid base. Uh, but we have egg rolls, um, and then we've got this drink, which is the Cantaloupe, which is a cantaloupe and vodka drink. Cantaloupe. Yeah, thank you. What do you say? The cantaloupe. The cantaloupe maybe like tr tricked me. <laughs> and then this is the what is this? It, this is the bubble milk tea. This is the uh, ice and sweetened version. 
Nice. So a non-alcoholic bubble milk tea. Nice. Ah, uh, nice. I was not impressed. No, nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Cheers, all. Cheers. Oh, China. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yum. Yeah, this is delicious. You don't like? Here's the issue. Um, because, so they're going to put the cantaloupe mixture first, and then I saw them put the vodka on top of that. And when I poured it into this drink, because we're splitting drinks, <laughs> I think I got mostly vodka with a splash of cantaloupe. Let's do a little, do a little back and forth. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's probably smart. Do a little bartending. A little bartending. Mine tasted delightfully cantaloupe, so that that that, that, that tracks. That yeah. Tracks. How's yours? Mine is delicious. It is just normal uh, milk tea. It's sweet. I will say the I thought it was like normal tapioca pearls. These are popping pearls. Tapioca. Did I say that right? Yeah. yeah. Where's that from? I don't know. I have no All right. No. Idea. No. There is that's that's from a movie or a TV show. Tapioca. What is that? All right. Let me know in the comments. You know that. <laughs> No comments. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> All the comments. What is he talking about? <laughs> but yeah, it's really good. It's sweet. And again, this is similar to the last two drinks. It doesn't feel like a little kid drink to me. It feels like a nice alternative or a nice mocktail. All right, second second try on the cantaloupe. That's much better. It reminds me of like getting... Mm. <laughs> it's like got those flavors. It reminds me of getting a... Uh, honestly, a soda from Club Cool, but with... with um, some alcohol inside. Yeah, I definitely feel that. For me, like, it is so cantaloupe that it reminds me of when you get a cantaloupe that's a little overripe, and it's so juicy and a little too sweet and soft. That's, like, the vibe of this drink. Does it make you feel cantaloupe -y? I do feel cantaloupe mm. Yeah, it's very, very sweet. Uh, yes. It's, for me, unfortunately, it's a little overly sweet. I would have put, I would have put more vodka. Surprise, uh, surprise. One. Uh, you definitely have to like cantaloupe too. You definitely have to like cantaloupe, but uh, overall, not a bad drink. Nice success. Thanks, China. All right, we got the egg roll. Mm -hmm. I put some <laughs> duck sauce on mine because uh, I don't know. Yolo. Uh, yeah. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. I don't think it's half bad. I think it's okay. It's not obviously the best egg roll I've ever had. It's a little mm. bit chewy, so they probably aren't super fresh. Yep. But they're nice and warm, and I like the filling. Hot take. This is probably one of my favorite egg rolls that I get. For some reason, this is this is not up to par like they usually are. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. So I, I get these a lot. Yeah, I get these quite a bit, uh, just because it's the perfect size. So uh, that way, if you're just drinking around the world, uh, you can just pick it up and kind of keep on rolling along. And they're uh, they're travel size too, so you just put them in your hand while you're walking. So typically, I always get these. These for some reason are not up to par, but a solid snack to sort of, uh, absorb some of that alcohol. Yeah. I've abandoned Sage and Emma because I have to go to the bathroom, which is probably something that you will have to do if you are drinking around the world or just exploring World Showcase. There are a number of bathrooms in World Showcase. There is not one that's like outside of restaurants in every pavilion. Uh, so we are going to show you some of the best ones today. I've already made a, a mistake. I should have gone when we were back in Norway because one of the better bathrooms is tucked in the Norway pavilion. So headed back there. Uh, there's not an easily accessible bathroom in the China Pavilion. The ones in the Mexico Pavilion are all within the table service restaurants. So it's a little trickier, uh, but Norway has a bathroom that's really easily accessible from just walking around World Showcase. If you turn up into the Norway Pavilion before you hit the Stave Church, you will find this little awning back here, which leads to a restroom. There's also a lot of walls that you can sit on if you're waiting for your friends and family in the restroom. So that's where I'm headed. If you want a copy of your Alice in Wonderland Disney bound, head to allears.net slash outfit, where you can find these looks and search for even more character, park, and ride themed outfits and makeup pics. Follow us at All Ears Style on Instagram for even more Disney bound inspiration. I have a report. Oh, yes. The Norway bathroom was good. Oh, good. We left you two egg rolls. Oh, that's nice. There were only four. I, well, yeah. <laughs> hey, um, we've been here, uh, the, the relaxing gardens in China. We, um, well, we relaxed. They're so relaxing. And we ended up sitting here for how long? Don't been, say. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> like almost 40 minutes. I'm very comfortable. <laughs> Has it been, I feel like, okay, it's, it's, no, it's, been, about it's 40. been about 40 minutes. This is the first I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
We've been sitting here. Uh, we're about three drinks into our 11. Yes. So now it's time for a very important conversation. Editor, if you'll drop in some like 90s style hip hop beats. Safety talk. Why didn't you tell me we were going to do that? This is safety talk. So drinking around the world is a very fun activity. It can be great to do with friends, with family, whether you're drinking an alcoholic drink or a non-alcoholic drink, but we want you to be safe while doing it. Uh, that means keeping track of how you are feeling and your portions. Sage and I are sharing every drink, yep. so we're not drinking 11 drinks each. We're drinking about five and a half, which is a lot more manageable over the course of an entire day. Emma has opted not to drink, yes. which is also perfectly okay. We want you to have an enjoyable time, whatever your choice. Another big thing that we're doing is we're having water almost at every stop. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Yes, it's important to hydrate because of, uh, because of a hot day, but also drinking water helps dilute the alcohol intake. So please drink lots of water. A water for every drink is a good rule. Yeah. We're also eating food throughout the day. We're having snacks periodically, and we ate before we started, so it just helps a little bit when you are drinking. And of course, do not drive if you have been drinking so much. If you are going to drink around the world and you have a Disney Resort hotel, then you can use Disney Transportation, which is a really awesome perk. If that's not an option for you, have a designated driver. Thank you, Emma. Yep. Yeah. Or go ahead and Uber or Lyft. Uber and Lyft both pick up at Epcot. It's super easy, and hopefully if you're staying close, it's not too expensive to do so. Last and certainly not least, remember, at the end of the day, this is still Disney World. So be respectful. There are people, guests from all over the world, trying to enjoy their magical day. And just because because you chose to drink around the world today like we did uh that might not be the experience they want so remember this is still disney world be respectful don't get sloppy don't get sloppy there are kids here we are currently passing through the african outpost which is not a full pavilion it's kind of a little transitional area that shows off like the cultures of africa um there is one dining location here called the refreshment outpost which does have beer but since this is not a full uh, World Showcase Pavilion. Uh, it's just kind of a little transitional area. We are not stopping for a drink here. It will not be one of our 11 countries. We have made it into Germany. Uh, obviously, lots of options here in Germany, most of them beer, <laughs> because that's the German way. Uh, there are several German beers here. The most popular is Schaffer Hoffer, which is a grapefruit beer that you can find a lot of places around Disney World and even in the grocery stores kind of in the area. Sometimes you can find it at Total Wine in your own hometown. But they also have some German wines in the Germany Pavilion and even some more specialty drinks uh, that we might check out today. All right, as we continue to drink around the world, we're here at our second favorite bathrooms, which is here in Germany to the left of the train models. I personally have had like six drinks at this point, including our waters. You have to stop. So for one of our snacks, we got the pretzel bread pudding. Why? From... <laughs> because Quincy. We were filming, I think it was like sneaky secret like ride. Sneaky Epcot ride secret? Yes. Yeah. And then we just came across like, they have, I love bread pudding. They have pretzel bread pudding. We have to get this. So she made me put it on the shop list. I did. I did do that. Um, so then we're trying one of our, this is one of our snacks. Uh, I know it's an immediate snack after we have the egg rolls, but why not? That's our happen. You can do whatever you want. Okay. To vacation. To vacation. To cheers. Cheers. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I would equate it to a softer cinnamon bun. Mm -hmm. Like a cinnamon roll. It's better than a cinnamon roll. Agreed. Yeah, it's, it's very good, but I don't get, there's, I wouldn't call it a pretzel. That's not giving me pretzel. There's no pretzel involved with this. I think you guys are being nitpicky. Just let it live. <laughs> So we grabbed that pretzel bread pudding from Summerfest here in the very back of the Germany Pavilion, but we are grabbing our drinks from a little bit more of an exciting location right here at Weinkeller. Weinkeller is the walk-up bar here in the Germany Pavilion. They've got some little like candies and snacks and stuff. They also have a wide selection of liquors that you can get glasses and cups out here, liqueurs, wines. Now keep in mind that bottles of alcohol cannot be opened in Epcot. Uh, they will be for you to take home, but it's really cool that you can try some international wines and then take some home if you're really attached to them. So inside the wine keller in the Germany Pavilion, we decided to get these um, liqueur shots, if you will. So this is the uh, apple liqueur and this is the pumpkin liqueur. Yeah, so this is pumpkin spice Mozart, which was, it's very popular and they typically only have it here in October, but for the past year they've had it pretty much year round here at Wine Keller. Highly recommend trying if you're a pumpkin spice person. They actually don't have a lot of non-alcoholic beverages uh, here in Germany, uh, other than like a frozen Coke. So we got uh, Emma this like 
chocolate. It's cho chocolate. In the past, they have had non-alcoholic beers, um, but when we ask the cast members, that's not available right now. So always ask the cast members if you're interested in that. Cheers. Uh, cheers, Jeremy. Cheers. And your, 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 your treats. Alright. Oh, interesting. That my kind of digestive. You're on a journey. Yeah, that was I because it the, the initial taste was definitely like apple juice. Like a thousand percent. I was like, oh this tastes like whoa. <laughs> There's not like an alcoholic kick to it. It is literally more of like a, a slow burn. Very sweet. It's very, it literally tastes like drinking apple juice, but it's alcoholic with a, with a very slow burn. This one has more of that alcoholic kick that you might expect. It definitely tastes like pumpkin spice. It's super creamy. I actually prefer the chocolate liqueur that Mozart does. They just do not have it today, but they usually do it in the gold bottle, gold circular bottle. Uh, this orange pumpkin spice one, extremely popular. You get the spice, you get the pumpkin flavor, and you get that nice kick on the end. This portion is definitely all you're going to want because yeah. it is very strong and it it's very sweet for both of these, but tastes it has your chocolateness. Um, it's multi-layered and it's like almond and hazelnut. I don't really love almond flavor things, so it's interesting. It's not overly sweet, but you know, that for a dollar so ninety-five. We have finally made it to our next stop. She's Italy. Putsi and I and Emma, we are splitting up because Emma is getting her non-alcoholic uh, specialty thing. I know. I mean, I'm, me too. Uh, here in Italy. Well, we head in here for some limoncello. Now, the Enoteca Castella is uh, literally a merchandise location where you can buy bottles of wine, limoncello, and some uh, fun merch. All right, so for my stop in Italy, I'm headed to Gelateria Toscana. This is a dessert walk-up quick service where you can grab different beers, wines, gelatos, and other desserts. Beverages or treats acquired. Uh, That's so a beverage. A beverage e beverage. Beverage s once it's melted. In the same way that a jellyfish is an animal and a plant. <laughs> okay. So I died. So I got the limoncello, which is basically a liqueur that's infused with lemon peel and simple syrup. Uh, Quincy actually got the amaretto, which is uh, infused with almond, orange, ginger, and honey. And then, uh, Emma, what did you get? I got the affogato espresso gelato. It's fresh Italian espresso poured over vanilla gelato and amaretto cookies. Yeah, cheers! Ah, cheers. Uh, your espresso everywhere. Sorry. That's wonderful. That's my, um, that's so good. Affogato is my favorite dessert in the world. Really? So I'm oh super jealous. Gosh. This was so delicious. The espresso was so nice and like just a strong flavor without being overwhelming. But then the sweet vanilla made it just, oh, this is perfect. Uh, this lemon cello is literally lemon and simple syrup. And it's, it's exactly what it tastes like. It's And it, alcohol. And alcohol. It's very sweet very tart. It tastes like a concentrated lemon drop martini. That is what it tastes like. Mm. It's a concentrated lemon drop martini because it's just so lemon and sugary and, and alcohol. But also something I would get because I'm not a beer drinker. I don't really love wine or anything like that, but if I wanted to taste of Italy, this is something I would totally do. And I've got the amaretto, which I have pretty often in like cocktails. I love uh, amaretto because it's an almond flavor to it. Uh, I've never had it on its own, and I'm actually really glad I tried it. I feel like drinking around the world is a good time to try liqueurs like this because they're not really meant to be drink, uh, drinking, drank, drunk, enjoyed. Enjoy. <laughs> they're not really meant to be enjoyed uh, alone. They're meant to complement other aspects, but they all have really like complex flavors. Some of these more famous liqueurs, so I'm excited. I'm trying amaretto. Um, it's definitely got that burn to it. Super, super sweet and almondy. I'm not sure I would get this again just because I do prefer amaretto as an ingredient, but I think it's worth trying on its own, even if you're just doing it at home. A salute to all countries, but mostly America. All right, we are here at Regal Eagle Smokehouse, the little walk-up window next to it, which you can just stroll right up to during your walk. Uh, this has cocktails, draft beer, hard cider, wine, and non-alcoholic specialties. A lot of really good uh, drinks here, frozen beverages, great for a hot day. I actually think this is kind of an underrated bar here in Epcot. It's relatively new, and I think a lot of people don't know about some of the really good specialty cocktails they have. We're also gonna step into Regal Eagle to get a little bit of air conditioning and another little snack. Regal Eagle is a barbecue restaurant. It is one 
one of my favorite quick services in all of Disney World. They have several different sauces inspired by different regions of the American South, which is really cool. Um, and I think their barbecue is pretty tasty, especially because their smoker is literally right here. They really do be smoking it. <laughs> they really do be smoking it. All right, so Quincy and I are sharing the frozen mint julep, which is Old Forester bourbon, citrus, and mint. I am having the berry sparkler, which is white grape juice, strawberry, peach, blackberry, and soda water. And we're all enjoying a sauce sampler. A sauce sampler. This is not an official thing. This is just where you buy french fries at Regal Eagle and then get all the sauces. <laughs> well, because they have a bunch of sauces, and I always think it's fun to, like... Try it all. First things first is gonna be the Sizzlin' Pit Dry Rub Coalition, which is the classic smokehouse sauce. Then we're gonna have the Blue Ribbon Brisket Sauce, which is more of a savory spice sauce. Then the Blue Ridge Vinegar League, which is a vin vinegar-based sauce. Oh, that's yeah. your- <laughs> And then finally, there's the Old Glory, which is sweet mustard sauce. The first one is the Sizzlin' Pit Dry Rub Classic Smokehouse Sauce. That one's your favorite? You said the vinegar based one is yours? Yep. I think my favorite is the mustard one. I really like the mustard too. The mustard is actually really good. Um, I didn't like our mint julep. I wasn't a big fan of it either. And I, you know, a couple of months ago had the mint julep non-alcoholic in Disneyland. And, and it was, I was chasing that high, truly. I've done the same. You were chasing I've not that. met the Disneyland mint julep high yet. No, and the thing is, like, I've had the frozen mint julep at Casey's, which is also non-alcoholic in Magic Kingdom at Casey's Corner. Yep. I really like that frozen mint julep. This one, with alcohol, which you would think I would like better because I, I like alcohol. Didn't like it. Well, and especially because it's uh, uh, Old Forester bourbon, which is like kind of a decent bourbon. Yeah, uh, the, the mint in it was weird. The mint in it was weird. It was a it was weirdly it was a weird sour taste to it that I yeah. didn't love. Uh, so overall, I would I would recommend skipping this. The berry sparkler it was pretty good. I mean, I think it was one of those that leans a little bit more on the kids side. They did use soda water instead of like Sprite, for example, so that made it a bit more adult, like not as appealing to kids, but it was normal, it was fruity, it was refreshing. I don't know that I would enjoy it as much as I did like the one in Italy, but it was fine. They have some alcoholic tea and lemonade drinks in the American Pavilion that might be more up your, more safe, or up your speed, up your alley. Up your alley. Your speed. Both of those things. Um, and they also tend to have, uh, typically, if you look around, especially at festival booths, they'll have craft American beers, um, many times local, which if you're a beer drinker, I think America America beers are pretty pretty solid. A big, a big reason why I think uh, the mint julep didn't really hit for us is because it was in a pre-mixed, uh, a lot of the frozen drinks are pre-mixed. They're not adding alcohol on top of that. All the alcohol has been mixed in with whatever the frozen like machine that's happening. There are some non-frozen beverages that they're mixing there right in front of you that might have been better, probably. Sage even tried it. He was like, let's do, let's let's not get the pre-mix. Let's but do something I else. Like, I want to chase the high of my mint julep, Sage. And, and here we are. And here we are. Uh, but the fries were super good. Yeah, those are some of my favorite fries. Favorite sauces? Uh, favorite sauce? I like the mustard one. Vinegar Lee. Classic barbecue. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, to oh, I, we're doing another game in Mitsukoshi's because that's I love doing games. We're in doing a game in Mitsukoshi. Yeah, quickly to to, to Mitsukoshi. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we are in the Japan Pavilion. Um, this is a very very beautiful pavilion. A lot of great restaurants in here. Uh, typically an awesome festival booth. Whatever festival you're coming to, the Japan booth is usually pretty good. Uh, but the best part of the Japan Pavilion, in our opinions, is Mitsukoshi Department Store. And in the very, very back of the store, you can find a lot of really fun Japanese treats like ramen, uh, di different candies and things like that, which I love shopping for, chips and things like that. And you can also find a sake bar. So that's where we're headed. You may have heard of the famous Japan drink, which is the Violet Sake. It's very beautiful, one of the most Instagrammable drink around the world drinks. Uh, you can often get it right here at the Garden House. It does taste like sweet tarts, in my opinion, and is not my favorite drink. I, I recommend it if you want a super sweet, super Instagrammable drink, but we're going to try something a little more authentic here. One of my favorite pastimes with, I think, both of you is... Uh, <laughs> Who else do you see? <laughs> is it only one of us? <laughs> Which one? It is... <laughs> Who, who do you like better? Sage. I can't right choose now. between my girls. Right now. Three, Three. go. Uh, he had a name. Quema. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, so uh, I love going to Mitsukoshi and having these like, blind games where we uh, like I choose something for Quincy who choose something for MM which choose something for me uh, we do a lot of blind taste testing here which is a lot of fun uh, so because you were doing something non-alcoholic yes I think Quincy and I we're gonna go around without you knowing and we're gonna pick something uh, non-alcoholic from the back because we're picking something for you you get to choose the sake we drink alright so um, we'll meet you at um, Garden House Garden yes. House okay bye how mean are we gonna be Extremely. Okay, good. Oh my gosh. What? I'm, do you want to be really mean? Do, do, do we? So, I had a friend buy one of these recently. What is it? They're these gel packs. Okay. They're supposed to give you energy. Okay. And they are like, you, are, you drink them like a drink. But they're like gel. And they're not, they're pretty gross. Okay. But they're supposed to give you energy. She has time. Do we want? I was I was gonna do that, or this thing, the original Calpico, just because it looks odd. Oh yeah, just white. All right. I don't know if we go gel or salty or, or weird and milky white. Weird milky like watery milk. This one's literally called Sweat. Healthy beverage that smoothly supplies the lost water and electrolytes during perspiration. With the appropriate density and electrolytes close to that of human body fluid, it can be easily absorbed into the body. It's an ion supply drink. <laughs> I this is calling to me. <laughs> Damn, it's calling to you. Let's do it. Pakari sweat. Pakari, thank you for all of your sweat. Thank you for all your sweat. Right. Okay, so to choose for them, I'm going to head out here to Garden House. This is the walk-up bar that is here in Japan. They have lots of options. This is where you can get the uh, famous Violet Sake drink. They even have some Japanese beers, and I'm going to choose some sake for them. Okay, so uh, we're back. You're, we're, you're back from the Garden House. These are smaller, so I did get you. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to get you, so I went with Sparkling, which is supposedly one of their least popular. Who's oh, who's wow. that for? Whomever you guys can do. No, it you gotta. No, you, you gotta. I, I, I want Sage to try this. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Okay. And this one is Nagori. So. Nagori. Okay, great. And so we got you. This drink that's called Sweat. <laughs> <laughs> so bad, so unfortunately this is appropriate. It's called Picari Sweat, and apparently... It's supposed to replenish it after you've sweated. It's supposed to replenish your sweat. Well, I've sweat plenty, so maybe I actually really need it. Yeah, there. Yeah. All right, cheers. 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 It is? It's really good. What is... What is it? It just tastes like... Like if you had like a little... Uh, like one of those powder... That you like add to your water. Yeah, that's all the same. Well, my sake is is not bad. It literally just tastes like sparkling sake, like a like a um, a sharper white wine kind of situation. Mine tastes probably similar, just a little creamier. It's got a it's got a bite to it, a higher alcohol content. Um, but you can definitely taste that here. Thoughts I now? think it reminds me very faintly of like strawberry lemonade. Oh, so that interesting. Could be wrong. If you taste this and you're, you disagree, I'm sorry. You heard it here first. This is what I think it tastes. I think it tastes like sweat. strawberry lemonade. It's like strawberry lemonade. That makes complete sense to my fantasy. <laughs> I did goof and have to backtrack again and made it to the restrooms here in the American Adventure Pavilion. These are by far my favorite restrooms in all of Disney World. They are very highly air conditioned. They have a ton of stalls. They even have sort of a back section that is a little more separated from the other stalls. It, they play like calming American folk music. Absolutely love these restrooms. You can find them sort of through this little, what is this called, pergola? next to the American Adventure Building, and I just recommend them for uh, any bathroom stops you might have. They are amazing. All right, we've made our way to Morocco, and they are excited about it. If you haven't been over here, Morocco is a really beautiful pavilion here, uh, right next to Japan. You can find things like Spice Road Table here and Tangerine Cafe, which serves more as a uh, festival booth right now, plus some fun shopping and some nods to Aladdin and Jasmine back here. We're actually headed into Spice Road Table for our beverage. Now, you can, there is a full bar inside where you can get where you can grab to-go beverages, but it is also a table service restaurant that serves Moroccan 
Moroccan style food, like house made hummus fries, grill, a grilled lamb kefta. There's an outdoor seating area and an indoor seating area. And luckily, if you can, if this you is can. actually just a really great place to watch the fireworks spectacular, whatever is currently playing. Epcot keeps switching it up. A really great tip about uh, Spice Red Table is that they do have an ice water cooler. Um, so you can just come in here and grab your own cups of ice water, uh, which is awesome if you're walking by or grabbing a drink in here. Um, it's a lot easier to snag than having to ask for a quick service spot for those free cups of ice water. So we got the Medina Mixer, which is Star African Rum, Vanderhum Tangerine Liqueur, and Cranberry Juice. And then Emma, Frozen Citrus Pomegranate Slushy. Nice. Oh, oh, oh! I'm getting pretty good at this. He might be showing you up. Yeah, I think he's showing you up. We're in the Fez house because if you're not having drinks in the Fez house, are you really drinking in Morocco? Yeah. No. Oh. Cheers. Cheers. What is that? What's, are you okay? You're having a visceral so reaction. Tart. No, it's so tart. I've never felt my face scrunch that Tangerine. Much. Tangerine. That's and cranberry juice. Yeah, I'm not a huge citrusy person, so uh, very tangerine. It's very citrus yeah. forward. Are you not a huge citrus person? I'm not. But something about the combination of the cranberry and the tangerine is making this like a fruity but still relatively savory and delicious complex sip. I'm a big fan. Interesting. Interesting. This is definitely, I think, in my opinion, the most like kid-friendly drink that I've had, the most kid-intention drink. It's just a frozen slushy. You can't get this with alcohol in it. I obviously did not this time. It is so tart. It's so heavy on the pomegranate flavor, but also incredibly sweet at the same time. I will not be able to drink this entire thing without feeling sick because it's so sweet and tart. Again, again, a controversial sip. A controversial sip for me, uh, for I guess us. For us. I am not a huge fan of this. Spice Road Table is one of my favorite bars to go to because it is such a great open bar. Um, you have a great view of the fireworks as well if the fireworks are happening. I know the outdoor table, if you're sitting at the outdoor table, if you can book a reservation during um, uh, for the fireworks time, it's a great place to see it. Uh, so I love Spice Road Table. Would I get this again? Probably not. I know that's controversial because you I might. love, this is actually one of my favorite things I've had today. No. So, wow. Controversial they, one. If you like tangerine, if you like something a little more like, I don't know, interesting? I, I think sage is boring. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> no um, one has know, ever said that. Ultimately boring, and his taste is boring. Noted. I actually prefer your review. <laughs> because Emma also thinks sage is boring. I didn't want to say it that way. <laughs> this, I am wearing this hat for you today. <laughs> There's not a lot of non-alcoholic things here in France. I like that hat. <laughs> Thank you. Other than coffee. Uh, so... Oh, I love coffee, though. This is your time to explore. <laughs> Once you got to France, and I want you to just, like, do the every little heart desire. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know what just happened. I feel like a third third wheel. <laughs> we are here in the France Pavilion, uh, which is one of the most popular pavilions in all of World Showcase. Of course, it is themed to France. It has recently gotten an expansion to include Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Okay. <laughs> uh, I absolutely love this pavilion as well. It tends to be very, very crowded, but it does have... Okay. It does have some absolutely amazing eats and drinks. Um, and of course, we are drinking around the world, so we're going to try some of them. Um, frankly... Okay. <laughs> Okay, so for my drink, I'm just going to head to Léol Boulangerie Patisserie. This is where you can get some amazing quick service food all year round here in France. Uh, we actually have done an entire video where we eat everything in France. So if you guys want to check that out, you can go uh, check it out on the channel. Unfortunately, because France doesn't have a ton of offerings, I am just gonna stop in for a little coffee. Plain cappuccino, and then I got a shot of vanilla in it, and I'm very excited about this. And also the the casual background where nothing's happening except for my coffee. 
All right, so we have gone with the slushes here in the France Pavilion. We couldn't mass these up. They are one of the most iconic drinks you can find around World Showcase. So Sage's is green. I went with the orange. Uh, these, the, the- I like the way you say orange. That's the French way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, this isn't, it's not an orange slush. This is the orange. Orange. Uh, the lemon is made with Grey Goose Citron. It also has like lemon flavors in it, of course. The orange is made with Grand Marnier, uh, orange juice, and of course, more orange flavors. So, tasty stuff, and some of my favorite drinks. This one tastes like creamsicle, I'm pumped. Cheers! Cheers. Uh. France delivers. It tastes like a creamsicle in like a slush form. It's made with Grand Marnier, which is a pretty high quality liqueur. So it really has like a robust orange flavor. I find it hard to resist these, and I think that they deserve their status as one of the most iconic drinks around World Showcase. So they tried to put a different drink on the shot list for today, and I said, I did. get that out of here. I want my orange. We always do this, but it's so iconic, so we couldn't pass it up. Yeah. Uh, I had the uh, lemon. It's not too, uh, tart, if you will. Usually I don't pair well with lemon things so they end up being really tart, especially at Disney World, but this is pretty solid. Tastes really good. Be careful. These slushes are the, out of any slush in Walt Disney World, they're the first to melt. It never fails. Yeah. France does not deliver for me because they don't have a single mocktail or even just normal kid option. So coffee it is for me. It's just normal Disney World coffee with some flavor in it. France, you're disappointing. Jeez. Not we a need a mocktail. We need a mocktail. Give me this, but I'm not alcoholic. And mo could deliver here, and they just chose not to. Yeah, and mocktail and like non-alcoholic, it's really trendy right now. So I'm really shocked that Disney hasn't gotten on top of it more. I feel like they're definitely like upping their game. I feel like the newer spots to like, for instance, there's tons of mocktails to the Regal Walk-Up Bar, which is one of the newer spots we've been to today. So I feel like they're upping their mocktail game, but they definitely haven't gotten to the point where they're refreshing old menus yeah. yeah. They just need at least one per country, and then we can talk later. Yeah. So get to work, Disney. Orange and the lemon. We love the orange. And oh, the lemon. And the coffee. Orange. Cap cappuccino. Oh, capuch. <laughs> now, the UK Pavilion is actually one of my favorite pavilions just because of the pub. I think the best three bars in Epcot in the World Showcase are uh, La Cava del Tequila in Mexico Pavilion, the Rose and Crown here at the UK Pavilion, and Spice Road Table in the Morocco Pavilion. They're just great open bars, awesome vibes, and I can't get enough of it. But here in the UK Pavilion, this is where you can meet Alice, Mary Poppins. They've got some cool entertainment in the back from time to time. Also, shout out to the Yorkshire Air Company Fish and Chips. Love them. All right, I'm going to the bathroom. Again? Yes, this is the reality of Drink Around the World. Sorry. We're not showing a sugar-coated, rose-tinted glasses version. This is a broken seal version. We're showing the reality where I broke the seal in Norway and we're all the way around the world at this point. Is there a proposal? Proposal? Yay! Can I congrats? Can I hug him? No, no, Sage! The bathrooms here in the UK Pavilion are located right around this castle. They're pretty good, not as good as America, but pretty good and a great stop if you need to go. All right, for our drinks here in the UK Pavilion, we are here in the Rose and Crown, one of the most popular bars in the UK Pavilion. And you can even have a sit-down meal here. This is a Sage Starkey favorite. So, of course, we had to make our pit stop here. Drinks underneath the street light. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I got uh, the cider and fireball, which is Irish whiskey, uh, fire uh, fireball cinnamon whiskey, and strongbow cider topped with uh, ginger ale. I got one of the Publins, which is a pretty famous option that you can get a Rosa Crown. It's where they mix two beers together. They have several on the menu. I got one that's off menu. This is the Harp and Smittix mixed together. And Emma got tea. I got tea. And I don't really love tea, but you know, it's the only option we have. Yeah. Again, yeah. Disney, you gotta keep up with the Disney mocktail. Just get a second mocktail, please. That's, that's all we need. Anything. And, and, and pubs, I know for a fact, should have non alcoholic beer. For sure. Cheers. Cheers. Right here. What's going on there? It's been a long time since I've had Fireball whiskey. Yeah. A long time. So, uh, I, I, I do think uh, whiskey and cider is a fun combination. Uh, 
truly. I, I like. I, I love adding just a little bit of extra judge in in, in, in a cider. Cause Fireball reminds me of college. Yeah. So I don't. Doesn't it do that for us all? Yeah. So I don't necessarily love the Fireball aspect of it all. But uh, as far as whiskey and cider go together, it's like it's a fun mixture. It's like a fun end of the night drink. It's light. You know what I mean? How's your tea? I'm not really a tea drinker, so it's not my favorite. It's just normal, uh, traditional English breakfast tea. I think it tastes like brown water, but that's because I have bad tea opinions. <laughs> tea is good. Don't listen, Emma. I, I have bad I, tea opinions. I'm on your side. Thank you, Sam. Oh my gosh, are you? I no, don't hang out with we're kind of teaming up today. Yeah, we are. Teaming kind of up? Hard. No. Cut the camera. You're teaming. <laughs> You're a team. No. With, with, between her curiosity and my insanity. And your intensity. Oh, we're tea drinkers. Yeah, we're okay. tea drinkers. I How, guess. How's yours? Uh, so I got the Spinnix and Heart Blend. Spinnix is one of my favorite beers of all time. I actually highly recommend it if you're a beer drinker. It's spelled Smithwicks. You can find it here at Rosen Crown. You can find it at Raglan Road in Disney Springs, and you can find it at a lot of Irish pubs, like around everywhere. So if you have an Irish pub in your town, see if they have Smithwicks. It's better on draft. Uh, it is pronounced Spinnix. It looks dark, but it tastes kind of like ambery light, and it's delicious. Everyone I've ever introduced to it loves it if they're a beer drinker. Uh, mixed with the harp, it makes it even lighter and easier to drink, so I'm a really big fan of this pub blend. I love that they do pub blends there. I think it's super fun for beer drinkers. So definitely a great sort of second-to-last drink tonight. So, funny enough, we actually were supposed to do way more today. Uh, but we actually just, this is the great thing about drinking around the world with friends, is that you actually just end up chatting. Yeah, and, and hanging out. And hanging out and laughing. Day. We just literally yeah. talked all day. I, it was the best day. It, it was, was a really good day. It was, yeah. good, it was, it was a really good day. Um, so, but we were going to go on rides, and yeah. we were going to take a middle-of-the-day break. But it's literally 8.30, and for us to finish, we, had to, we have to just keep on trucking along. Yeah. Um, but taking a break and just sitting down and chatting with your friends, that's another great, easy, safe way to continue to drink around the world and still feel okay. I feel pretty okay at the end I of the day. I feel great, yeah. If you're moving pretty quickly, um, I highly, highly recommend taking one of two breaks, either seeing the American Adventure show and the American Adventure, which is about a 25-minute show in air conditioning, comfy seats, and there's a row where you can sit against the wall and take a nap. Yep. Yeah. I was, I was going to make you go through um, Beauty and the Beast sing-along, which I know you haven't done oh, yet, and you refuse to do it. Yeah, I'm so glad you didn't make you do that. But that was, that was almost I mean, part of it. I've never done it. Yeah. Um, and then my other go-to when I'm drinking or eating or just hanging out around the world is to take a midday break by taking the boat from Morocco to back over to the sort of world celebration side ride living with the land or space your birth and then boat back over to morocco and continue the loop yeah. that's a really nice midday break i literally wrote that down and we didn't have time because we, we sure we were it. too busy actually being friends we're yeah to be fair we took canada. a lot of breaks we're walking through oh, canada. We didn't oh we're walking stop. through canada. We're in canada okay um we've made it to canada yes right, we did our it. final pavilion um, oh we're sharing Yes, I still have the bartender. But we're uh, we're doing the Ottawa Apple, which is uh, Crown Royal Whiskey, Maple Apple Infusion, and Cranberry Juice. All right, we're bartending yes. together. Oh, my God. Yep. This, I'm stepping away. It's Three, happening. Two, one. Well, okay. That's pretty good. <laughs> Ottawa Apple, baby. What'd you get, Emma? I got the maple popcorn milkshake. It is part of the festival while we are here, uh, the Flower and Garden Festival. There are not any non-alcoholic options here Zippo. in Canada. None. Besides, like, soda. Yeah, besides soda. Um, so I decided to go with the festival booth, which is always an option for you. Alcoholic or non-alcoholic, you can check out the festival booth. They might have something for you if you aren't interested in any of the items that are available at the official year-round booths. There's a festival almost, almost at, always. Almost always. Yeah. There's a festival going on. When there's like four it, weeks a year that aren't there's a handful. Yeah, if you're weeks. here when there's not a festival happening, something something went wrong. We are yeah. impressed. We are yeah. impressed. We're you impressed. You had to try a yeah. little bit. And honestly, good for you because that means you got very low crowds. Yes. Low, yeah, there's pros and cons. Yeah. So uh Cheers. 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 Final drink! We did it. Oh. This is delicious. Oh, I love an Ottawa apple. 
Really? That's good. That's new for me. It tastes like apple juice, but with like a, obviously a much more adult spin to it. Yes. Like the, the liquor in it, and I'm getting like a maple leaf flavor to it. Mm -hmm. That's very pleasant. Everything on the, on like listed, you can taste every single thing. You can taste the maple, you taste the apple, and you can taste the whiskey. It's really good. Um, it's very, very sweet. Very sweet. It's very sweet. Um, Not the sweetest thing we've had today. That's true. But very sweet. No, I love it, but it is one of those like... Your teeth feel a little funny. It mm -hmm. is so sweet. Mm. Yeah, but that's a great that. way to describe that's the, it. I think that's the maple and the apple mixing together. It's together. really good though. The it maple good. really makes it special. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mine is actually delicious. It is almost like a vanilla milkshake that they've added maple syrup in and then topped off with popcorn. I really like it. You actually can get an alcoholic version of this, which I have had uh, in the past and really enjoy it. I thought I would not like it. If you like a sweet drink, this is a really great option. Oh. Best drink of the day. Oh, Go. gosh. Emma? I was incredibly impressed with the mocktail in Mexico, but if I was going to get anything again that wasn't honestly this, I probably would go back to Italy. It was oh, so good. Fair it was enough. delicious. Mine is going to be orange. It's a classic. It's absolutely my favorite in France. That slushy is absolutely delicious. That's my winner. Uh, I'm going to go something a little bit different. I think just because I... Back in the day, I loved a good lemon drop martini. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the lemon cello. Love it. Lemon nice. cello was like an, a concentrated uh, martini. It was really, really, like, it was just like, it was fun. I felt very Italy, Italian. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Good for Italy. Now, I will say all of us feel great. None of us yeah. are sick. Nope. None of us have like, like overdone it today. We've all been like with our senses. And that's because of a lot of the tips we told you earlier. I highly recommend doing those. It's actually just no fun to get over, over, to overdo it on Drink Around the World. We've had a great day today. We've tried a lot of amazing drinks. Um, and we could do it again with all the same yeah. safety tips we use. I will say, I feel a little crazy. All oh. right, you've had just a lot of sugar. <laughs> I've had a lot of sugar. Just a lot of sugar. Yeah, next time, uh, I think we should do this again, but next time, I think we should move at a little bit of a quicker pace because honestly, one of my favorite parts about drinking around the world is taking a break and riding some rides. Yeah. Um, because nothing accentuates living, living with the land. That like a, a margarita. Like a margarita. Um, and even there's even some fun things to do at each country uh, that you actually don't have to go all the way back to the World Celebration area. Like, we could have ridden Grand Fiesta Tour. We could have ridden Frozen Ever After. The, uh, the Kid Cot areas. Um, the DuckTales. Oh, the uh, DuckTales, DuckTales Adventure. On the Disney Play app. There's yeah. so many things, uh, like fun adventures you can do. We waited in two minute lines to get our food and we had an amazing time hanging out as friends. So there's just a lot to do here. It's really cool. Drink around the world. 10 out of 10 day. 10 Great out of day 10. 10 out of 10 day. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now come check out our full perfect day here at Epcot. You guys want to do this again tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, okay. How, okay. I'm actually off tomorrow. Or we can just quickly, we've got 30 minutes left. We can go again. One more time. Go. One more time. <laughs>